and give out his best at all times. I thank you for shielding me from those who came to our home with ulterior motives. And because you could not give in to their ill desires, you are bent on soiling your noble names. Yet, you were undeterred. I thank you for being you, TBJ, my love. You are unique in every sense. That's the man who does not understand the word impossible. He doesn't understand the word impossible. And above all, I thank you for using your life, spending your life on things that will outlive you. We will keep the fire burning. We will keep your dreams alive by God's grace. You are the man I loved. I was proud. And forever, I will be proud to be your wife. You have made it clear to us all that this is the job you are born for. You are living for. And you will die for. Though you are not dead, I know that. You are not dead. But this you did on your last moment on earth. Your passing was so peaceful. Yes, it was so peaceful. I've crested you forever in my heart. But I know that God Almighty has you for his keeping. Till we meet to part no more. It is very sad. Very, very sad that I Evelyn may not be able to see you physically again. The children may not be able to see you physically. Your spiritual sons and daughters, the big synagogue family, and your loved ones in the world. But it's also comforting that you have gone home after service. So sleep on, my love. Sleep on, my God's general. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'm so proud of my dad, T.B. Joshua. Um, Dear Daddy, it's hard to put in words how remarkable a person you are. I had the good fortune of having you as a father who sowed the seed of imperishable values of hard work, discipline, generosity, and a host of other virtues too numerous to recount. I remember the countless times you called me in boarding school, asking me about my favorite subjects, how my exams went, and for some reasons, asking me to predict what I think I got in every test. I truly appreciated that you took your time out of your busy schedule to call me. It was not just a responsibility for you, but you truly, truly cared about my education, and you really loved listening to me talk about school. I will not be what I am today, if not for your encouragement, your support, and your formidable dedication. You emptied yourself for your family and served humanity. Practically everything I know about the love of God, I learned from you. From a tender age, I was excited and eager to hold the microphone for my dad, every Sunday service. And after every Sunday service, he kept on asking me, how is the service today? And he told me that the work of God is so beautiful to do. This became really part of my growing up experiences with him. 
I also remembered when he took me to his altar and he told me both of us to kneel down on the floor and we prayed for 45 minutes on the floor. My legs were hurting. He later told me that the flesh is weak, but the, um, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Indeed, you lived a prayerful life. A prayerful life is one of sacrifice and you truly lived that life to their last moments on earth. I am in awe of your love and fear of God. And I really truly understood that at a very young age, my dad would give his time, his dedication for this work. I would truly miss your conversations with me on a daily basis about life and moral. Daddy, as it was typical with you, your conversation always retained a sense of humor and mystery. If anyone lived a fulfilling and yet deliberately enigmatic life, it was you. I will truly miss... I will truly miss your wisdom, your knowledge, your mystery, and your humor. You have lived a life of unwavering com com commitment to passion and service. I have no reservation to say that my dad had the biggest heart that I know of, and he was a true humanitarian to this generation. What a feat you have left for all of us to live up to. I'm so surprised to hear about all the condolence messages from people around the world concerning your compassion. Even some people I've never met in my life, they all testify to your compassion and your humility. What a life you lived, such a legend and an exemplary light. I believe that by God's grace and your peculiar time, your peculiar sense of time, that while we were not ready, you were fully prepared for the call home. Rest in peace, Daddy, your loving daughter, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. My name is Promise Joshua. And here is my tribute to my dad. As devastated as I was upon hearing about the news of my dad's passing, I can't say that I was completely unprepared for that day. Growing up as a biological daughter to a man like Prophet T.B. Joshua, my dad raised me to understand that he was on a mission in this world. For him, life on earth was spiritual warfare, not a place to get too comfortable like it was home. He essentially lived each day like it was his last, with most of his time spent at his prayer mountain, utterly focused on executing an assignment that only him seemed to be in the know of what the instructions were. Since I became more socially aware and more inquisitive about my dad's life, I realized that the implication of such a lifestyle was that once he was done accomplishing what he was sent for, he will be called back home to the one who sent him. I must say that my dad did an excellent job at preparing me mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and even physically for a moment like this. I remember the conversations we had, particularly last year, when I spent over a year with him at his prayer mountain, right before he eventually released me to pursue my master's. He said to me, before I release you, you have to spend nothing less than six months with me. Then you can go and do whatever you want to do. I ended up spending over a year with him. I saw him almost every day of that year. He'd tell me about how I needed to strengthen my relationship with God, carried me along at least three out of the countless times that he dedicated to prayer in a day. Most mornings, he would wake me up, would do our morning exercise routine, and we would have conversations about the most random topics. There was no aspect of my life that he didn't try to leave a positive footmark on in that year. By the time he was done with me and ready to release me back into the world, there was this sense of fulfillment that I observed in both of us. In retrospect, the memory of this moment is a place where I find solace now that he has passed on. I remember our trips to Arigidi Akoko, Ondo State. 
He made sure that I was present when we, um, he was visiting the old people in town. He would ask me to kneel with him as we kindly asked the elders to accept our gifts. They would pray for us. He would look at me and say, this is the good life. I remember our trips from his new site to his old site. I would fall asleep in the car and he would always make a point to wake me up to ensure that I was observing my environment to see the reality of life for thousands of Nigerians. He'll tell me never to think that I was more deserving of the life that I had as a result of the grace of God in his life than the people that were on the streets. For me, this was an important lesson that shaped my perspective and daily interactions. Lastly, Daddy, I want to say thank you for being such an exceptional role model. Your life is a living testimony of how God can raise a young boy from an underprivileged background with so much passion and zeal for God's work and use him in extraordinary ways. It is also a testimony of the extent to which one person's life can make such a massive positive impact in the world with the thousands of lives that bear witness to the positive mark that you've made in their lives and in this world. I'm so proud to be your daughter, Daddy. So we'll meet again in heaven, Dad. From Pom Pom, as he usually calls me, your twin. Hello, everyone. I'm Hart. I'm Prophet TV Joshua's daughter, and I would like to start by thanking everyone for coming out and celebrating my father's beautiful life. On that dreadful day, the 5th, June 2021, my father, Prophet T.B. Joshua, departed this world to join his father in heaven, and he hasn't been the same for me again. I don't have many words to express how much I love and miss him, me, daddy's girl. From a tender age, he showed me that his love for me was immeasurable, and I will forever love him for that. In the world where men were seeking fame, my father had a dedicated group of men, women, boys, and girls who loved the very ground which he walked on. He was clean in heart, in body, and mind, and I shall never forget the special smile, caring heart, and forever warm embrace. Knowing that I had someone who I could call on any time and pour out my all to was one of the greatest parts about having a mighty man as a father. My father was an extraordinary person. He was not only the best role model, but he volunteered in his free time. He wasn't okay with only being a wonderful father, but he gave back to the world and helped those who were in need. As we may all know, my father's notable feature was his charisma. He could lift any room he walked in with just his presence and a smile. And not only did he apply this in his work as a televangelist and philanthropist, but in his daily life as a father. My father always had a smile on his face regardless of any situation and would never let anything trouble him. He was a jovial man, full of fun and laughter. He played uncountable jokes for me and my sisters and sadly is leaving a hole in our hearts which no one can fill. One of my favorite memories with my dad was the time where he got me my first bike. I was elated and bouncing with joy. I had been pressuring him countless times for a bike, but he pushed me aside, so I guess he didn't want to get it from me. I tried my best to make him aware of the fact that I was angry by making odd faces in front of him. He was provoked by the fact that I, I was provoked by the fact that he would hug me irrespective of the tantrums I threw and still show me all the love and attention he did. So on the day I saw the big, beautiful purple bike in front of the car, which I just dropped it, I ran directly to his room and gave him a big hug, showering him with thanks. I cherish every moment I had with my father, and I know he's smiling down at us right now. I'm saddened that death took him away from us, but God said, in all things, we should give him thanks. His death has left a scar in our hearts, but his legacy will stand in our lives. I feel so grateful to have had as much time as I had with him, and I will always remember having the most ambitious and remarkable father. My father was the most important person in my life, and I feel heartbroken to no longer have my father and spiritual figure with us. His memory will not only carry on in my heart, but in the hearts of everyone lucky enough to have known a delightful and astonishing man like Prophet T.B. Joshua. 
I am confident that we will meet at the feet of Jesus on the resurrection morning. Emmanuel. My name is Brian Moshi, and uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua is my spiritual father and also my father-in-law. I'm married to his beautiful daughter, Sarah Joshua. And I have a few words to say to, to in tribute of my father in the Lord. I've never met a man who could be so many things at the same time and yet be a master of all his trades. A lion, yet a lamb. A master, yet a servant. A great teacher, yet a great student. Like the ancient tales in the holy book, our father, Prophet T.B. Joshua, was a true reflection of our Lord Jesus Christ for this generation and generations yet unborn. He exemplified the true meaning of living by the grace of God and living each day as if it were your last day. He never allowed his circumstances to dictate the direction of his life. He didn't wait for people to set an example for him. He simply acted. I continue to thank God Almighty for the short time, yet very memorable time I had with him on this earth as a disciple under his mentorship. He always said that nothing can keep us on cause like a deep love for the Lord. Indeed, he was so focused on his cause. I remember how many times I doubted if he were human, made of flesh and blood. I asked myself, how can one touch and pray for thousands of people on a Sunday service? Where did he get the strength to meet each of them in person after the service? Even after finishing meeting with them, he still went on to pray to his God well into the dead of the night until daybreak. What a force of nature he was. He never waited for tomorrow to accomplish what can be done today. And now, at just 57 years old, his, accom his, accom his accomplishments continue to echo all over the world as if he had lived for hundreds of years in our midst. His zeal, determination, and uncanny focus to achieve what he was called for are unmatched. Even upon his great achievement, he humbly took time out of his busy sch schedule to teach, interact, joke and pray with us every day. As a father-in-law, Prophet T.B. Joshua taught me to believe in my dream and stand firm and fearless in the sight of challenges and hindrances that can arise in life, to simply let love lead, and that God takes unlikely people and puts them in his kingdom. Conclusively, Prophet T.B. Joshua was a trailblazer. His legacy still rose all over the world beyond tomorrow. He proved what he said, one life for Jesus is all I have, and one life for Jesus is so dear. Eshe Pupo Daddy, Simini Alafia, thank you very much, Daddy. Rest in glory, your son, Brian Moshi. Thank you.
Please put your hands together for the family, please. You may be seated. Thank you very much. God bless you. Wow, wow, wow. You know, I have seen a lot of fathers, a lot of mentors, a lot of CEO outside their house. They are good people, loving people, caring people, touching the life of so many. But in their very home, they are not good. But with what we have just seen, what we've heard, shows that this great man of God, in and out of his home, is a good man. Please put your hands together for our father. Imagine the daughters giving tribute about their father. Imagine how eloquent and fluent they are. And things they learned from their father. Some of us, if we are here to give tribute about our father, all of you will start laughing. Me that is standing here is one of them. So please, I will use this opportunity to talk to fathers here, parents here. Give the best life to your children. Do not prepare the future for them. Prepare them for the future. Please, put your hands together once more for the family. I've come to realize that uh, most time in life, the greatest investment is to invest on humans. That is one. So in my study, some people create team. They will tell you, this is my team. Sometimes team don't really last. After the visionian leaves, what happened to that team? So we say, this is my crew. What happened after the man that God gave the vision for that crew leaves? What happened to that crew? But in the case of our great man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, he followed the leadership of Jesus Christ. He created the disciples. And ladies and gentlemen, on this note, I want to call on the disciples for their tributes. Please put your hands together for them. Would um, take the testimony from the disciples now if they are ready. Disciples, God bless you. Praise the Lord. 
Emmanuel. Emmanuel. If God is with us, who can be against us? Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are here representing disciples of Prophet Ibi Joshua all over the world. As you know, he touched life, nations and the whole world. So we are here to pay tribute to our father, to our teacher, to our guide, to our mentor who is still living in our hearts. My name is Racine from the Republic of Senegal. Good morning and win today. My name is Anne from Nigeria. My name is Chris from United Kingdom. My name is Olayinka from Nigeria. My name is Angela from the United States of America. My name is Angelique from Rwanda. My name is Angela from Colombia. My name is Olamide Itsu, I'm a Nigerian. My name is Flor Perez and I'm from Mexico City. My name is Joseph and I'm from Nigeria. My name is Ellie and I'm from Greece. My name is Yitzinde, I'm from Nigeria. I'm Elizabeth, a Nigerian. I'm Catherine from the UK. My name is Olamide Wan from Nigeria. My name is Mary Jean, I'm from Botswana. My name is Nadine and I'm from South Africa. My name is Kemi and I'm a Nigerian. My name is Okpayemi and I'm from Nigeria. My name is Omoye and I'm from Nigeria. My name is Sadebayo, I'm from Nigeria. Mm. My name is Sadebayo Victoria, I'm from Nigeria. My name is Annette, I'm from Jamaica. My name is Alison, I am from Colombia. My name is Modupe, I'm a Nigerian. My name is Stella, and I'm from France. My name is Ezekiel and I'm from Nigeria. My name is Chisum, I'm from Nigeria. My name is Fanny and I'm from France. My name is Bosse and I'm a Nigerian. My name is Maya and I'm from France. My name is Vajim and I'm from Republic of Moldova. I am Rosalind Armstrong, a Nigerian. My name is Janet Nyaku. I'm from Ghana. My name is Abenin. I'm from Nigeria. My name is Ruth. I'm from the United Kingdom. My name is Raquel. I am from Spain. My name is Cindy. I'm from Indonesia. My name is Musumola. I'm a Nigerian. My name is Elizabeth. I'm from Nigeria. I am Marietta from South Africa. My name is Sophia. I'm a Nigerian. My name is Esther and I'm from Nigeria. My name is Anna. I'm a Nigerian. My name is Elizabeth. I'm from Nigeria. My name is Mercy. I'm from Nigeria. My name is Lemuel and I'm from Cameroon. My name is Mary, and I'm from Nigeria. I'm Moses Lawrence, I'm from Nigeria. My name is Samuel, I'm from Nigeria. My name is Godwin, and I'm a Nigerian. My name is Elijah, and I'm a Nigerian. My name is James, I'm from Nigeria. My name is Solomon. I'm a Nigerian from the UK. My name is Clarita. I'm from Nigeria. My name is Sung Ali. I'm from South Korea. My name is Morenike, a Nigerian. My name is Juliet. I'm from Nigeria. 
My name is Blessing, and I'm from Nigeria. My name is Esther, and I'm from Nigeria. I'm Folake, and I'm a Nigerian. Sorry. My name is Emmanuel, and I'm from Nigeria. I'm Eugene from South Africa. Thank you. We start by the words of Apostle Paul saying this in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. You may have 10,000 teachers in Christ, but you don't have many fathers. Through the good news, I became your father in Christ Jesus. Indeed, he is our father and remain our father in Jesus' name. Dear Daddy, your coming into this world was divine. And it was divine destiny that brought all of us to you. This is the mystery of grace. That God takes unlikely people and puts them into his palace for eternity. We came from different nations from different backgrounds, with different hearts, and likely people indeed. You saw past our faults, our failures, our weaknesses to the person God created. You clothed us, fed us, nurtured us, spirit, soul, and body. You took our families as if they were your own. You inspired us. You corrected us. You believe in our change. And here we are today. You had a supernatural sensitivity to our needs. You knew when our hearts were troubled. 